Welcome to this next video in our series, and this video will give you an overview of the Galaxy interface. So when you go to our Galaxy instance, which you can find in the location displayed on your screen, you will be asked to enter your username and password. Your username is your Cienzano email address, and the password is a password associated with that email address. So it's a password that you use to log into all Cienzano websites. An important thing to note is the fact that Galaxy does not allow letters with accents such as the grave or acute accents in the password, while these can be present in your Cienzano password. If you have any accents in your password, you will have to change your Cienzano password to something that does not contain these accents, or you will not be able to log in. Also, the reset password link here does not work as it is only meant for users that do not use a single password for signing on to all services. If you forgot or want to change your password, you have to do it by following the procedure documented by IT. To log in, just click login here. And next you will be greeted with this main screen. And this is the main Galaxy window. So it exists out of four panes. On the top, we have our taskbar. And there are a lot of uh, menus here, but I would like to cover one particularly now. And that's the analyzed data. So analyze data actually brings you back to this screen. If you're stuck somewhere or you want to return to the screen, just click analyze data and this will be the screen. So whenever you're doing something and you don't know anymore what you're doing or how to get out, just click analyze data and you will be brought back to this screen. Another menu that might be interesting to tell something about is the user menu here. If you click on it, you will have a drop down. It will tell you which user you're logged in as. You can change some preferences, like uh, your password if you want to change it. You can log out, and you can also access safe histories, datasets, and pages. Now, if you look at the left, we see that we have the tools panel, and there are two ways to select a tool. So either you know the category the tool belongs to, and you can just click on the category this will expand with all the tools belonging to that category and you can just click on the tool and it will open in the central window. To close a category, just click on the category again and the list will contract again. But you can also search tools by name, which might be easier if you already know the name. So for instance, if you want to look for a tool called FQ2FA, we start typing FQ2 and only the tools with FQ2, either in the name or in the description, will be displayed. If you want to open it, just click on it. Whenever you click on a tool, it will open in the central window, which is called the working area. So for each tool, you will have to give an input file. Galaxy will try to fill it in automatically. And in this case, you only have one parameter that we can set, yes or no. But for all the tools, you will have probably several parameters that you can set. Below this, we find a documentation area. And this is where you can find some more information about the tool and the parameters that you can set. Now, we do use tools that were designed by other people, so external people. And sometimes they don't add the documentation here. Maybe it's simply not available for that tool, or maybe they just forgot to add it. If you find one of these tools that don't have a documentation there and you would like to see documentation, just let us know. And if there is some kind of manual or so online, we will try to add the documentation here for you. Now, if you go to the right, we have uh, the history panel. And the history panel has a lot of icons and menus uh, that we need to explain. So we'll start here at the top left with refresh history. So if you click on refresh history, it will update the status of all your data files in the history. For instance, sometimes the status of a job will indicate that it's not yet running, while in fact it has already started in the background. Clicking this icon will show the updated status. Next to that icon, we find the cogwheel, which expands to a very important menu. In this menu, you can perform several actions on your history, like creating a new one, copying, deleting, and so on. You can also perform actions on the data sets, and at the end, there are three options that might be a bit confusing for a lot of users, 
but we will explain this shortly. The rightmost icon will lead you to the history overview. If we click on it, all histories that we have saved will be displayed here. So we have the one on the left that was our current history. This was one that we were working in before we switched here. Then I have two other histories over here. And if you click on switch to, this history will become your current history. So then you click on done and the main Galaxy overview will load again. And you will see on the right hand side that now the files are there from the history that we switched to. Another way of going to the history is by clicking the user menu and going to saved histories. So I had an unnamed history here with 266 megabytes of files. I can click this, click on switch. And as I told in the beginning, there is no button here to go back to the main window. You just click analyze data and you will go back to the main menu with the original data set on the right hand side. It is also important to note that your jobs will keep running even if you change histories. So you can switch between histories while jobs are running. Because as soon as you start a job in Galaxy, it will keep running in the background until it's completed. You can change histories, close your browser, shut down your computer. They will keep running on the server. Now, when we go back to the history pane, there are several other items that still need explanation. So first we have the name. By default, a history will be called unnamed history if you create a new one. To rename it, just click it and give it a new name. Very important here is that you have to enter to have the name changed. If you don't hit enter, then the name will revert back to the original. I'm going to show this. I'm just going to click somewhere else and it will be unnamed history again. So you click it, you give it a new name, you hit enter and then the name will be uh, permanent. It will just tell you how many files uh, are shown in your history. Now we only have two, but if you have uh, a few dozen there, then it might be interesting to know how many files are there. It will also show you the size of your history. And this is very important as every user has 100 gigabytes available by default. This should be more than enough for almost everyone. If you do require more disk space, please contact us as it is possible to expand it. However, we want to urge everyone to ask money for disk space in their project proposals because the cost of this disk space is enormous. To give you an idea, the high performance disk that Galaxy is running on costs more than 6,000 euros per terabyte. Slower disks that could be used for backup also cost more than 400 euros per terabyte. And these are the costs for raw terabytes. This does not include the disk space for backups or the cost of backing up all the data to tapes. In addition, all of these disks also have to be replaced every few years as they also wear out. By requesting some money for storage in the project proposals, we can ensure that the people who actually need the extra storage are able to get it. If you need to know exactly how much the storage will cost for your project, please contact IT and they can give you an estimate. And this brings us to deleting data sets and the entries in the cockwheel menu that might be confusing, which I referred to a bit earlier. So you can delete a data set by clicking the X over here. So you click on X, you will see that now in our history, one file is shown and one is deleted. But actually this file is not deleted. It's just hidden from your history. Because if you click on deleted here, it will show the deleted data sets, but you can undelete it. Or you can permanently remove it from disk. So this means that if it's deleted by the X, it's not really gone yet. It will still take up space in your history. If you really want to remove it, you can permanently remove it from disk here. If you want it back, just click undelete and it will appear in your history again. Cassettes, and you want to free up some space in your history, you can remove all the deleted data sets by going to the cogwheel menu and clicking on purge deleted data sets. Once you click this, the data sets will actually be removed from the disk and the disk space will be freed up again. Now, the other two 
items here. You also have unhide hidden data sets and delete hidden data sets. They come from workflows. And in workflows, you can specify a number of files that will be created during the workflow, but should not be visible in your history. And these will be hidden. So either you can unhide these, so then they will show up in your history, but you can also delete them. If you deem them not to be necessary anymore, you can delete them, but this will do exactly the same as clicking the cross on it. So they will be deleted between quotes, but to remove them and free up disk space, you really need to purge them afterwards. Now, one more thing about disk space. If you would look in the history, if I go to the saved histories here, you will see that one of my histories has zero bytes on disk. And if I switch to it, you will see that there are two files there. These are files that were gotten from the shared data and shared data objects that are in Galaxy do not count towards your disk space. Only the files that you upload yourself, they count towards your disk space usage, not the other ones. So I will switch back to the original new name here that we have and go through the history panel some more. So we see that we have two files here. They're all numbered, one and two, and they also have a name. If you click on the I icon, so I did it just now, it will open up this file in the central window. This is assuming that the file can be displayed in a human readable form. If you have some binary files, it will not be able to display it here. It also says that this file is very big and it only shows the first megabyte in order for you not to download the 200 megabytes of this file or 133. If we go to the crayon menu, we click on it here, we can edit the attributes of the file. So we can give it a new name, update the info, add some annotations, but also very important, we can change the data type. So Galaxy will automatically try to determine which data type it is. And in this case, it's that this file is probably a FASTQ file, but sometimes a tool will depend on another input type. And here you can change the data type if this data type would not correspond to the tool's input type. This happens, for instance, with Trimomatic. This will be explained in one of the other videos where Trimomatic doesn't accept a FASTQ input but it needs to be a fast queue Sanger input. And this you could change over here at the data type. Now, if you want some more information on the file, you can just click on the file and you will see it expand. There are several things listed here. For instance, the size, we see that this file is 133 megabytes. It's in the fast queue format and we have the info that could be added in the attributes. Below this, we have this screen that shows you the first five or six lines of this file, if it can be rendered as a human readable form. To download this file to your computer to export to another program or to use uh, in your other tools, you can click the disk icon. If you click on this, you will get a menu that will allow you to save the file on disk. If you click on the information icon, the view details, in the central window, you will get a lot more information about this file. Some of it is the same as the size and the format, but you will also get the exact date that this file was created and some more information that might be useful. There are two links here that might be useful in some cases. Standard out and standard error show the output of the tool from the command line. And although it's called standard error, it can actually contain some information that has nothing to do with errors. In most bioinformatics tools, standard out is used for the actual output of the tool, while standard error is used for anything that might be useful but is not part of the actual output. So when you click on these links, you might get some more information about the run, but this is not always the case. In some other videos that we will create, you will also be able to see for some tools which information can be found there. Before we stop, there's one last interesting thing that I want to show you. This is sharing histories. 
So to show this, I've logged in as another user, created a history, and we're going to share this history with my original account. To share the history, you can just go to your saved histories, click on the history that I just created here, and here you have share or publish. If you click on share or publish, you can click on this link here, share with the user. So if you click on it, you will have to give the Galaxy user email, which is just the email address of that user. So in my case, it would be graf.wienand at wivesp.be. So I submit now. At this moment, you will see that my email address is added here and this history is shared with me. So I will log out as this user now and I will log back in as my own account. There. So if I go to the cogwheel menu now, I can click on history shared with me. And here you will see the unnamed history shared from the other user before. Now I can just select this history, click on copy, and this will copy the history into my histories. So it says now that the copy has been copied. I can go to the saved histories again, and you will see that this history is here. And I can switch to this history, for instance, and you will see the exact same files that were in the history of the other user. So this is a way that you can share histories between other colleagues and you can collaborate on the same project. So these are the most important things you need to know about the Galaxy interface. And in the next videos, we will show you how to upload the files to Galaxy so that you can start using them and how to run the tools to analyze them.